Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is WireDogSec back with another video for you guys. Today's video, we are going to continue with the SOC level one path. And this is the cyber defense frameworks section. And this is the cyber kill chain room. The cyber kill chain framework is designed for identification and prevention of the network intrusions. You will learn what the adversaries need to do in order to achieve their goals. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Task one, introduction. Let's see what they have for us, folks. The term kill chain is a military concept related to the structure of an attack. It consists of target identification and decision in order to attack the target. And finally, the target destruction. Thanks to Lockheed Martin, a global security and aerospace company that established a cyber kill chain framework for the cybersecurity industry in 2011, based on the military concept. The framework defines the steps used by adversaries or malicious actors in cyberspace. To succeed, an adversary needs to go through all phases of the kill chain. We will go through the attack phases and help you better understand adversaries and their techniques used in the attack to defend yourself. So why is it important to understand how cyber kill chain works? The cyber kill chain will help you understand and protect against ransomware attacks, security breaches, as well as advanced persistent threats, also known as APTs. You can use the cyber kill chain to assess your network and system security by identifying missing security controls and closing certain security gaps based on your company's infrastructure. By understanding the cyber kill chain as a SOC analyst, security researcher, threat hunter, or incident responder, you will be able to recognize the intrusion attempts and understand the intruder's goals and objectives. We will be exploring the following attack phases in this room. You got recon, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, installation, command and control, and attack or actions on objectives. Let's see, learning objectives. In this room, you will learn about each phase of the cyber kill chain framework, the advantages and disadvantages of the traditional cyber kill chain outcome. As a result, you will be ready to recognize different phases of or attack or stages of attack carried out by an adversary and be able to break the kill chain. All right, read the above. We already did that. So task number two, we're going to talk about recon. And let's see here. To learn what recon is from the attacker's perspective, first, let's define the term reconnaissance. Reconnaissance is discovering and collecting information on the system and the victim. The reconnaissance phase is the planning phase for the adversaries. Example, you're basically scoping out the target, right? You want to rob that bank, so you're going to scope out the bank and see what information gather. OSINT, also known as open source intelligence, also falls under reconnaissance. OSINT is the first step an attacker needs to complete to carry out the further phases of an attack. The attacker needs to study the victim by collecting every available piece of information on the company and its employees, such as company size, email addresses, phone numbers from publicly available resources to determine the best target for the attack. That's absolutely correct. Social media can be a great place to find information on the target company and their employees and such. You can also find out more about OSINT from this Veronis article. What is OSINT? So check that out if you're interested. Let's look at it from the attacker's perspective, who initially doesn't know what company he wants to attack. All right, scenario. A malicious attacker who names himself Megatron decides to conduct a very sophisticated attack that he was uh, planning for um, out the years. Um, he has been studying and researching different tools and techniques that could help him get to the last phase of the cyber kill chain. But first, he needs to start from the reconnaissance phase. In order to operate in this phase, the attacker would need to conduct OSINT. Let's have a look at email harvesting. Oh boy. Email harvesting is the process of obtaining email addresses from public, paid, or free services. An attacker can use email um, address harvesting for a phishing attack, a type of social engineering attack used to steal sensitive data, including login and credentials and credit card numbers. The attacker will have a big arsenal of tools available for reconnaissance purposes. Here are some of them. The harvester. Other than gathering emails, this tool is able to is also capable of gathering names, subdomains, IPs, and URLs using multiple public data sources, hunter.io. This is an email hunting tool that will let you obtain contact information associated with the domain OSINT framework. OSINT framework provides the collection of OSINT tools based on various categories. There's also others out there like Multego and some other ones, right? And the attacker would also use social or social media websites such as LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to collect information on a specific victim he would want to attack for or the company. 
uh, as I stated earlier, the information found on social media can be beneficial for an attacker to conduct a phishing attack. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Be sure to hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. Once you subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell. All right, so you know every time I post a new video. As you can see here, most people that view my videos, view my channel, are not subscribed. Now, if you do subscribe, it will help me get into the YouTube algorithm so that we can continue to grow our glorious community here. As always, thank you all for taking the time to watch. Have a nice day and enjoy the video. And let's see here. What is the term of the Intel Gathering Tool that is web-based interface to common tools and resources for open source intelligence? And that's going to be the OSINT framework. So let's go ahead and type that in. What is the definition for the email gathering process during the stage of reconnaissance that was called email harvesting? So there we go. And task number three, weaponization. All right, things are getting juicy. After a successful reconnaissance phase, Megatron would work on crafting a weapon of destruction. He would prefer not to interact with the victim directly, and instead he will create a weaponizer that according to Lockheed Martin, uh, combines malware and exploit into a delivery payload. Most attackers usually use automated tools to generate the malware or refer to the dark web to purchase the malware. More sophisticated attackers or nation state uh, sponsored APTs would write their custom malware to make the malware sample unique and evade detection on target. Let's first define some terminology before we analyze the weaponization phase. Malware is a program or software that is designed to damage, disrupt, or gain unauthorized access to a computer and exploits a program or code that takes advantage of the vulnerability or flaw in the application or system. A payload is a malicious code that the attacker runs on the system. Continuing with our adversary, Megatron chooses uh, Megatron chooses to buy an already written payload from someone else in the dark web so that he can spend more time on the other phases and in the weaponization phase, the attacker would create an affected Microsoft Office document containing a malicious macro or VBA, visual basis for application scripts. If you want to learn more about macro and VBA, please refer to the article Intro to Macros VBA for Script Kitties by Trust So check that out if you're interested. An attacker can create a malicious payload or a very sophisticated worm, implant it on the USB drives and then distribute them in public. An example of the virus the, an attacker would choose command and control, also known as C2, techniques for executing commands on the victim's machine or delivering or deliver more payloads. You can read more about the C2 techniques on MITRE ATT&CK. Definitely check out MITRE ATT&CK. An attacker would select a backdoor implant, the way to access the computer, which includes bypassing security mechanisms. All right, question time. This term is referred to as a group of commands that perform a specific task. You can think of them as sub routes or, yeah, sorry, subroutines or functions that contain the code and that most users use to automate routine tasks. But malicious actors tend to use them for malicious purposes and include them in Microsoft Office documents. Can you provide the term for it? Well, that's going to be a macro. So let's go ahead and type that in there. And let's go ahead and check out number four here, delivery. The delivery phase is when Megatron decides to choose the method for transmitting the payload or the malware. He has plenty of options to choose from. Phishing email. After conducting the reconnaissance and determining the targets for the attack, the malicious actor would craft a malicious email that would target either a specific person, spear phishing attack, or multiple people in the company. The email would contain a payload of, or malware for example, Megatron would learn that Nancy from the sales department at a company A would constantly like the post on LinkedIn from Scott, a service delivery manager at company B. He would give it a second guess that they both communicate with each other over work emails. Megatron would craft an email using Scott's first name and last name, making the domain look similar to the company Scott is working at. An attacker would then send a fake invoice email to Nancy, which contains the payload. Distributing infected USB drives in public places like coffee shops, parking lots, or on the street, an attacker might decide to conduct a sophisticated USB drop attack by printing the company's logo on the USB drives and mailing them to the company while pretending to be a customer, sending the USB devices as a gift. You can read more or you, you can 
read about one of these similar attacks, CSO online, cyber criminal group, mails malicious USB dongles to targeted companies. Now, anytime that a user received a USB flash drive, CD, whatever external storage device, right? They would send it to us, the cybersecurity team, and we would take it into like a lab environment that's separate from the corporate environment, right? Completely off the network. And then we would go in and analyze, make sure there's nothing funky going on with it. Watering hole attack. A watering hole attack is a target attack designed to aim at a specific group of people by compromising the website they are usually visiting and then redirecting them to the malicious website of an attacker's choice. The attacker would look for a known vulnerability for the website and try to exploit it, aka uh, web or WordPress. The attacker would encourage the victim to visit the website by sending harmless uh, emails pointing out the malicious URL uh, to make the attack more efficiently. Um, after visiting the website, the victim would unintentionally download malware or a malicious application to their computer. This type of attack is called a drive-by download. An example can be a malicious pop-up asking to download a fake browser extension. What is the name of the attack when it is performed against a specific group of people and the attacker seeks to infect the website that the mentioned group of people is constantly visiting? Remember, that was the watery hole attack. So... I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this over. Then we're going to continue on to task number five, exploitation. Now let's see what they say here. To gain access to the system, an attacker needs to exploit the vulnerability. In this phase, Megatron got a little bit creative. He created two phishing emails, one that contains a phishing link to a fake O365 login page, and another one containing a macro attachment that would execute random, or sorry, would execute ransomware when he victim opens it. Megatron su successfully delivered um, his exploits and got two victims to click on the malicious link and open the malicious file. After gaining access to the system, the malicious actor could exploit software system or server-based vulnerabilities to escalate the privileges or move laterally through the network. According to CrowdStrike, lateral movement refers to the techniques that a malicious actor uses after gaining initial access to the victim's machine to move deeper into a network to obtain sensitive data. If you want to learn more about server-based or web-based vulnerabilities, please refer to the Trihackman Room OWASP Top 10. The attacker might also apply a zero-day exploit in the stage. According to FireEye, the zero-day exploit or a zero-day vulnerability is an unknown exploit in the wild that exposes a vulnerability and software or hardware and it can create complicated uh, problems well before anyone realizes something is wrong. A zero to exploit leaves no opportunity for detection at the beginning. These are examples of how an attacker carries out exploitation. The victim triggers the exploit by opening the email attachment or clicking on a malicious link using a zero to exploit, exploit software, hardware, or even human vulnerabilities. An attacker triggers the exploits for server-based vulnerabilities. Can you provide the name of a cyber attack targeting software targeting a software vulnerability that is unknown uh, to the antivirus or software companies? Remember that was the zero day, right? So I'm gonna copy and paste this over. Alright. And then task number six, installation. That's what they say here. As you have learned from the weaponization phase, the backdoor lets an attacker bypass security measures and hide the access. A backdoor is also known as an access point. Once the attacker gets access to the system, he would want to reaccess the system if he loses the connection to it or if he got detected and got the initial access removed, or if the system is later patched, he would no longer have access to it. That is when the attacker needs to install a persistent backdoor. A persistent backdoor will let the attacker access the system he compromised in the past. You can check out Windows Persistence Room on TriHackMe and learn how an attacker can achieve persistence on Windows. Uh, the persistence can be achieved through the following. Install, uh, installing a web shell on the web server. A web shell is a malicious script written in the web development language, uh, such as ASP, PHP, or JSP, used by an attacker to maintain access to the compromised system. Because of the web shell simplicity, and file formatting, PHP, .asp, yada, 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 can be difficult to detect and might be classified as benign. You may check out the 
great article released by Microsoft on various web shell attacks. Installing a backdoor on the victim's machine. For example, the attacker can use Meterpreter to install a backdoor on the victim's machine. Meterpreter is a Metasploit framework payload that gives an interactive shell from which an attacker can interact with the victim's machine remotely and execute the malicious code. Creating or modifying Windows services. This technique is known as T1543.003 on MITRE ATT&CK. And it says that an attacker can create or modify the Windows services to execute the malicious scripts or payloads regularly as part of the persistence. An attacker can use tools like sc.exe. sc.exe lets you create, start, stop, query, or delete any Windows service. And reg. To modify service configurations, the attacker can also masquerade the malicious payload by using a service name that is known to be related to operating system or legitimate software. Adding the entry to the run keys for malicious payload in the registry or start folder. By doing that, the payload will execute each time the user logs in on the computer. According to MITRE ATT&CK, there is a startup folder location for individual user accounts and a system-wide startup folder that will be checked no matter what user logs or no matter what account logs in. You can read more about registry run key slash startup folder persistence on one of the MITRE ATT&CK techniques. In this phase, the attacker can also use time stomping technique to avoid detection by the forensic investigator and also make the malware appear as part of a legitimate program. The time stomping technique lets an attacker modify the file's timestamps, including the modify access, create, and change times. Can you provide the technique that is used to modify file time attributes to hide or change to uh, existing files? Well, it's time stopping as we just saw. So let's go ahead and type that in. Uh, can you name the malicious script planted by an attacker on the web server to maintain access to the compromised system and enables the web server to access or to be accessed remotely? That's going to be the web shell, right? So let's go ahead and type that in. And number seven, or task number seven, is going to be talking about uh, command and control. And let's see what they have here. After getting persistence and executing the malware on the victim's machine, Megatron opens up a C2 command and control channel through the malware to remotely control and ma manipulate the victim. This term is known as CNC or C2 beaconing as a type of malicious communication between a CNC server and malware on the infected host. The infected host will consistently communicate with the C2 server. That is also where the beaconing term came from. The compromised endpoint would communicate with an external server set up by an attacker to establish a command and control channel. After establishing the connection, the attacker has full control of the victim's machine. Until, recent, until recently, IRC, Internet Relay Chat, was the traditional C2 channel used by attackers. This is no longer the case as modern security solutions can easily detect malicious IRC traffic. The most common C2 channels used by adversaries nowadays are... The protocol is HTTP on port 80 and HTTPS on port 443. This type of beaconing blends in, um, blends the malicious traffic with the legitimate traffic and can help the attacker evade firewalls. DNS, domain name server. The infected machine makes constant DNS requests to the DNS server that belongs to an attacker. This type of communi or C2 communication is known as DNS tunneling. That's absolutely right, right? Attackers want to blend in with normal traffic. So if you're going to something crazy like port... 4444 4, 4, 4 or something like that well it's probably gonna get flagged or if you're doing some kind of weird protocol it's probably gonna get flagged and now the defenders know that you're inside the environment right so they're gonna kick you out they're gonna find you and they're gonna kick you out important to note that an adversary or another compromised host can be the owner of the c2 infrastructure what is the c2 communication where the victim makes regular dns requests to a dns server and domain which belongs to an attacker that's going to be uh, dns tunneling as we saw here right so we're going to copy and paste this over and there we go okay task number eight attack or actions on objectives exfiltration sounds pretty fancy after going through six phases of the attack megatron can finally achieve his goals which means taking action on the original objectives with hands-on keyboard access the attacker can achieve the following collect the credentials from users perform privilege escalation which means gaining elevated access like domain admin access from a workstation by exploiting the misconfiguration internal reconnaissance for example an attacker gets 
to interact with internal software to find its vulnerabilities, lateral movement through the company's environment, collect and exfiltrate sensitive data, deleting the backups and shadow copies. Shadow copy is a Microsoft technology that can create backup copies, snapshots of computer files or volumes. Ransomware likes to do that. Overwrite or corrupt data. And those wiper type of malware likes to do that, right? It says, can you provide a technology included in Microsoft Windows that can create backup copies or snapshots of files or volumes on the computer, even when they are in use. Remember, that's going to be the shadow copy, as we just read about here. So let's go ahead and plug that in there. OK, now we need to task number nine, practice analysis. And let's see what they say here. We really hope you enjoyed this room. In order to strengthen your knowledge, let's do a practice analysis. Here is the real world scenario for you to tackle the infamous Target cyber attack, which led to one of the largest data breaches in history, took place on November 27th, 2013. On December 19th, 2013, Target released a statement confirming the breach, stating that approximately 40 million credit card and debit card accounts were impacted between November 27th and December 15th, 2013. Target had to pay the fine of 18.5 million under the terms of the multi-state settlement agreement. This is considered to be uh, the largest data breach settlement in history. How did the data breach happen? Deploy the static site, which you already have loaded up here. Attach to this task and apply your skills to build the cyber code chain of the scenario. Here are some tips to help you complete the practical one. Add each item on the list in the correct kill chain entry form on the static site labs. So you have various ones here. It says use the check answers button to verify whether the answers are correct. Where wrong answers will be underlined in red. This is what's the flag after you complete it. So pause the video and try to go through this yourself. Come back to the video. All right. Now let's go ahead and continue and plug these into the site. Right. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, exploit facing application. Now let's see what that would go under. That would be this one i believe right so let's just go back up here real quick because it doesn't say what these are right so here we go um yeah so what is the computer i cannot scroll over let me see here uh, okay yeah exploitation yeah okay so there we go for that one and let's go back down uh data from the local system and that one should be the, I believe it's this target one. So I'll plug that in there. Uh, PowerShell. And that one's going to be, let's see here. I have to keep referencing weaponization for sure. Right. And let's see what this one, this box one is going to be installation. Okay. So let's go back down here. And installation should be. Let's see here. Actually, this one is the installation, right? Yeah. So that's going to be, uh, I think that, yeah, this sounds like it, the hijacking. So there we go. Where's that? Let me check again. They have two boxes on there. Yeah, that the one with the, with the arrow is installation. So what's this other box here? Uh, I guess it's delivery. Okay. So let's see delivery. If there's anything referencing an email here. Yep, Spirit Feed is phishing attachment. So there we go. And then the last one is going to be this um, loudspeaker, loudhorn, whatever you want to call it. it. Should be fallback channels. So there you go. Or the me the megaphone. That's what it's called. So we'll go ahead and check answers. Awesome. There we go. Now hopefully you all are able to figure this out yourselves. If not. Hopefully this video was able to assist you in completing this particular area of the room. Now task number 10, conclusion. Let's go ahead and close out. All right. Final thoughts. Cyber kill chain can be a great tool to improve network defense. Is it perfect and can it be the only tool to rely on? No. The traditional cyber ch kill chain or Lockheed Martin cyber kill chain was last modified in 2011, which, if you remember, is the date of its establishment. The absence of updates and modification creates security gaps. The traditional cyber kill chain was designed to secure the network perimeter 
and protect against malware threats. But the cybersecurity threats have developed drastically nowadays, and adversaries are combining multiple TTPs, which stands for tactics, techniques, and procedures, to achieve their goal. Adversaries are capable of defeating threat intelligence by modifying the file hashes and IP addresses. Security solutions uh, companies are developing technologies like AI, artificial intelligence, and different algorithms to detect even slight to detect even even slight and suspicious changes. Since the main focus of the framework is on malware delivery and network security, the traditional cyber kill chain will not be able to identify insider threats. According to CISA, the insider threat is the potential of an attacker or of an insider to use their authorized access or understanding of an organization to harm that organization. We recommend not only relying on traditional cyber kill chain model, but also referring to MITRE ATT&CK, as well as Unified Kill Chain, which I believe is the next video, to apply a more comprehensive approach to the defense methodologies. That's right. Like it says here, you might use take and choose or pick and choose from each different one here and choose whichever one works best for your organization, right? And go ahead and hit complete. And we are done. Awesome. All right, if you enjoyed the video, got any type of good information out of the video be sure to hit that like button hit the subscribe button if you are new here help out the channel and welcome to our community for all you newcomers that hit the like button as always thank you all for watching have a nice day i will see you later